What are we running here? A cadet ship number one? Are we ready or not? All decks are ready, sir. Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of a brand new podcast uh, with me and Mike, and this is Cadets. Hi Mike, how's it going? Very well, Matt. How are you, mate? I'm I'm good. Uh, I've just I've literally just finished watching the first episode of Star Trek. Um, yeah, and have a lot of fun. So I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> I just watched it too. <laughs> um, oh man! Given, given that this is the first episode, I will I will quickly kind of run over the premise of the show. Um, I feel like I'm in at least a slightly unique position in as much as I um, know nothing about Star Trek. I have seen basically nothing of Star Trek my entire life, um, but I'm the, I think the kind of person who will really enjoy Star Trek. Like I really like the premise of um, of the show and the, the way it runs. Like mm-hmm. I like slow paced sci fi. I like that there's lots of kind of ethical quandaries going on. I like that to some extent they're trying to explain the kind of sci-fi that's happening as well. It's like try and actually yeah, explain yeah. what's going on with with the science behind things. Um, try and get a scientific solution out yeah. of it instead of just using um, the force. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, there's not, not much mystical going on, I guess. So yeah, I just I just really wanted to kind of shotgun all of Star Trek. So I thought, why not make a podcast talking about it as I go for first experience right from the beginning perfect time to do it at the moment within lockdown lockdown oh, yeah. seven or eight or whatever <laughs> lockdown we're in now lockdown the next generation yeah <laughs> so so yeah i've i've seen almost no star trek mike you've got some more experience with star trek yeah i've got some experience in star trek like i remember watching um jean-luc picard next generation uh patrick stewart as a kid and you know grew up grew up watching you know that every I can't even remember what what day it was. Every Wednesday we went round to the dad's or whatever it'd be on. Uh, so grew up watching that. Was was always a big like I say. I was always a Star Wars fan from like a very young kid. Yeah, you know too. it's it's kind of interesting because Star Trek was around for s- such a long time before Star Wars came about. Um, it's it's very very it's a very different show. Very very different kind of. Um, universe you know it, it is it's completely different especially from that and you know what jumping in from the first episode 1966 obviously we're doing 2021 now it's it is dated to watch it is in a way it's exactly, a yes. bit challenging to watch did you find did you find it a challenge just to kind of like get your head out of you know visual effects from these days uh from the, from modern times and stuff and like the audio quality and the um the the props and every everything used everything used that it was uh it was like a theater show <laughs> it was like, I know what you mean. yeah it felt very much there was no hiding that it was a set <laughs> um yeah yeah, wh- yeah whether it was a challenge maybe for two or three minutes because the the first just very very opening of the show is very sparse yeah um you immediately get some incredibly cheesy uh, sound effects of like the the blips coming from space and the the little siren going off on the and and I was like wow okay yeah this is this is old <laughs> coming the speed of light collision course um but I wouldn't say it yeah. was a challenge for very long cuz I I unironically really really enjoyed this episode <laughs> I really liked it good um, so this was a good start yeah no that's good that's good it's it's like i say for me it's it's a bit of a, it was a bit of a challenge and that's why i watched it twice i had to watch the episode twice because the first time it was like a shock are you <laughs> um especially with this so many programs these days like you know the budgets that they have um do we know what the budget was for this movie, uh, for this show do we know what the budget was for the pilot um, i have I have no idea, actually, but I'll take a quick Google. While you Let's have a little Google of that, yeah. Because, I mean, it can't be... Obviously, it's a pilot episode. What I loved about it was... Um, what I really, really enjoyed was just getting thrown in right at the deep end. Like, there was no hesitation. Yeah. There was no, like... Um, they just... They, they let the audience absorb the information um, and just expected them to go along with it. You know, there wasn't, like, a, a full description of everything that was happening. You didn't know who these characters really were you didn't you all you knew is they're in a situation something's happening boom and you're going for it and it's that and it just goes from there um 
obviously we can talk spoilers all night long because this is the whole premise of the show, isn't it? So, you know, we're just going to rip <laughs> sure. this bad boy it's, apart. It's 60 years old. I think if you've not seen it by this point. Uh. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, I, yeah, I, you know what? I, lo- I loved like the technology that they used and everything like that. I loved the beeping, buzzing sounds that they had for like um, enemies coming. Even when they did their sort of, um, the first time you see them like use warp, drive to travel to like the planet that they're going yeah. to like that uh, again then that that for me was very very theatrical like the the music coming on in the background oh, the, the zoom so the lights going down ah oh, <laughs> the, the the flashing of the stars they're still like they're just stood there but the flashing of the stars going by they're all just like staring at a screen like they're just staring or probably just at a wall or something yeah. like that and even the stars themselves <laughs> you know, are like a rorschach like there's clearly mirrored down the middle yeah. Oh, brilliant, brilliant! Um, but I, I, lo- I loved all that. It just got you thrown straight in. You know, imagine being a viewer, seeing that for the first time. Um, you know, maybe you've read some sci-fi stuff through like the fifties and stuff like that, yeah. and um, you know, uh, maybe you're a bit older at the time. It was, it was probably like. Wow, yeah, we're ratcheting the verge. Don't forget, a few years later, the, the, you know, they were planning on going to the, the moon and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like the space was like a exciting thing at this at, in the nineties, nineteen sixties. You know, it was really exciting. Uh, so I think I think maybe like even all those. Obviously, I know I'm jumping around a little bit. You know what I'm like, Matt. You know I'll jump around. You know my, my mind will go a bit crazy. Jump around all you like, Um I loved them just doing that and just putting you in a scenario where, all right, this is where we are. We're in we're yeah. in twenty third century. Um, they're just they're just coming home from a battle. Like you didn't even see that happen. <laughs> didn't didn't see it happen. But the, um, when um, uh, Captain Pike uh, goes into his quarters, um, and then the Doctor, which I can't remember the name of, just off the top of my head, the Doctor. Uh, no, I'm not sure I can either. I love that conversation though. Their little yeah, uh, their their chat like about the doctor and the bartender yeah sort of thing. It's great. Yeah. The devil are you putting in their eyes? Who wants a warm martini? What makes you think I need one? Sometimes, a man will tell his bartender things he'll never tell his doctor. Yeah, the dialogue is. The dialogue was really interesting. There were certain moments through it, and I was just like, it's it's kind of, uh, like, again, I, I go back to this theatre style, but it, it was really, really good. It was, you got absorbed in the conversation. Yes, I, I agree with that. I thought you, their establishment of characters in the whole episode was really good. I got very drawn into just, like, how people were talking to each other. And that also feeds back into, like you were saying, you're just sort of thrown in. And I thought that was one of the really cool things about the episode. They weren't trying to establish every single thing for us. That there are clearly no. established relationships that already exist. Um, and yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. like getting a little glimpse of that. And then also, not just in characters, but also in in like processes. There are clearly just established ways that this ship and this world works. And they don't tell you about it. You just kind of see it. And I thought that was really cool. Like. I think yeah. a good example of that is when they're be- when they're going down to the ship. He says, uh, "Sorry, going down to the planet." They finally get mm. the message saying there really are people down here, and they get ready to land. And the captain tells first lieutenant, "Like we're going down." And then they talk a little bit, and then like fifteen twenty seconds later, the lieutenant says, "You know, all decks have have acknowledged landing starts." And it's like, "Oh, okay, cool." So there's a little like process here. You don't just land on the planet. They have to contact all the decks. All the decks have to respond, and then once everyone knows what's going on, now you land. And they they don't really touch on it they just it gets mentioned and it gets mentioned like 20 seconds after the captain says they're gonna land and it's just things they like just that. do it like it's protocol isn't it like yeah. you know it's they're explorers they just you know obviously they they want to make sure that they um that they can breathe on the planet and stuff because right. i noticed that the second time watching it round i noticed a lot more of the scientific scientific terminology that they were using to say um, how much gravity was on the planet, yes. could they actually go down there? Is it you know is it safe and everything like that? Um, which is interesting, you know, like that is that is really interesting because then that draws a certain kind of people in as well. It's not just like um, spaceships flying around and shooting. And I, I we can't we, we can't keep referring to Star Wars, but <laughs> it's not that kind of idea, is it? You know, 
Yeah, it's uh, I, I love those moments like through the through this episode anyway. I've heard Star Wars once referred to as science fantasy, whereas Star Trek is science fiction, which I think is a a neat way of putting it. Because um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's definitely yeah. true. Um, yeah, one's a space opera, one's a science. Show. Yes, exactly. And, and I do like that the science does take priority to the characters in in some ways as well, like. Like you say, they're talking about the gravity, the fact that it's an oxygenated atmosphere. One of the first things that uh, Pike says uh, on his broadcasts um, is that, you know, he tells them the time warp they're traveling in. I don't even know what that means. I don't need to know. It's just cool that he mentions <laughs> I don't know it. what that means. I don't know what that means. These people apparently need to know that. That's great. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I just like that there are relative all these things that are just already are established and we're just kind of thrown in like you say yeah i don't even i don't want to touch on like some of the some of the dialogue lines just yet <laughs> because i want to like hold back on that a little bit but i think due, due to the the times when it was filmed and stuff but there is one or two lines that just absolutely broadsided me. i was like <laughs> oh in modern day 20 2021 um i, I wondered if they were going to write that in later do you know what I mean? Like as we were watching, as we we're watching the show, will things certain ch- change? Like um, there was certain sexism, co- uh, sexist comments made and things. Yeah. And then I thought, well, no, because it's still filmed in the sixties, so they're still gonna have that mentality, right? You know, like it's the writers aren't gonna jump forward sixty years and realize, oh, this isn't how you really should address people. Uh, I was imagining that the sexist um, quotes were gonna be some of the ones he picked up on, and I'll be interested to see if they're the ones that I've got written down as well. What? Where have I got it here? I've written down the time in it. Nine minutes in. <laughs> nine, yeah. nine, nine minutes in. Oh, oh, nine minutes in. The line, the line. It's just that I can't get used to having a woman on the bridge. And it's already, but there is a woman on the bridge. <laughs> What's interesting about that, though, is that, okay, so there are some definitely just some sexist things happening in the episode. Um, but that is yeah. one example where what's really interesting about the episode to me is they're sort of half aware of it. They're actually kind of in some ways addressing the sexism because he's saying like mm. the, the episode is aware that it's weird for him to say that he can't get used to a woman being on board when there is a woman who's the first lieutenant. Um, and you yeah, see her reaction. Like, yeah, to she's it as well. number one. Um, mm. So may, maybe in the maybe in that universe, you know, if we, we're both coming at this from a from a fairly. Um, uh, you know, a, well, a very brand new sort of mindset. We live in the 23rd century now, Mike, so we understand this stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I know, yeah, we, we get it, but it's like, maybe in their reality, it's only just kind of getting introduced. Uh, yeah, sure. You know? yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, that's how it was made out to be anyway. Like, oh, times have changed now. Like, yeah. women are being allowed on the, on, on the bridge. And It does kind of read like How that, did yeah. she... How, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really, um, that's a really interesting concept that you've come up with. That really interesting. But it, it doesn't permeate the whole episode. Like they're not completely self aware of it because there are quotes where that it's clearly just ignorance of the writers it, that they're being sexist. Like one example sure. is later on where do you mind me jumping into quotes? I know you said you were going to try and hold them off, but can I give an yeah, example? Yeah, go for it. No, I, I know <laughs> we can't. I can't help it. I couldn't help it. Like I know we, we jumped straight in sixteen minutes into recording, and I was just like, I just I'm itching to go. Like. Um, there's a bit later on where the mind reading aliens, spoilers, uh, the mind reading aliens uh, are starting to like try and manipulate while all four of them are in the cage. And Captain Pike says, You'll find my thoughts more interesting than, than the three women that Ooh. I'm in the room with. <laughs> and I was like, Ooh. Yeah, that's not part of what the episode's addressing. That's just clumsy writing. Um, or at least that's how that it's just to me. date. That is just dated yes. writing, isn't that it? Is like, that is just dated. But... Um, that is, uh, yeah, there was another, there was another line <laughs> from Spock and it was just the way that it was delivered and it was just, it just cracked me up a little bit cause it was just so out of there, but they get, um, they're about to transport themselves down to the planet, mm-hmm. right? So you got the, um, you got the first officer, you've got the, the officer, which keeps bringing Pike like information yes, or whatever. The um, yeah. And then it's only the two ladies that get transported down and it's Spock's reaction. The women! <laughs> <laughs> the women! The women have been taken. Oh God, it got me so... I don't know why. It was just... I wrote it down. 46 minutes, 47 seconds. The women! I'm going to have to start time <laughs> anything I write down as well. You're, you're a level above me, am I? I 
I just kept pausing it and I was just like, <laughs> how far have I got in? And I was like, five minutes in. And at the, at the top of my notes here, I've got five minutes in and then underneath it, I've got facts in space. And that this is, I'm, I'm sorry, I am jumping around a bit here, but <laughs> they've got all this technology, they've got all this, this stuff and they get their information for a fax machine. Yeah. At one stage, <laughs> and I was. <laughs> but at other points, they're using like the computers on the screen. At one point, Spock waves his finger across, and it moves the screen across. Yes, yeah. And I was just like, I was like, whoa! I was like, that's so like but, ahead of its time for thinking what the technology is going to be like and stuff. And then, but then every now and again, you still got some of the old stuff coming. Still and a got cl- printer and a on clipboard. there, papers, <laughs> clipboards. Yeah. Every, oh, you need a clipboard, great. don't you? Yeah, yeah. They hadn't quite got into the um, the. the uh, the iPad sort of idea just yet, maybe. Maybe they haven't quite come up with that concept. But there are places where they have got those little future gadgets, which is cool. They're they're not everywhere yet. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. So even the concept of everything that was going on for the aliens that were on the planet, Mm. like their whole whole mission, or what is perceived to be the mission as as we're working through the episode, as you're watching it, um, you know, they're trying to... She's. How would you describe the female character on the planet, Matt? How would you describe that character? On the planet? I've, I mean, very stereotypical, I guess. Like, her, her only real qualities are that she is a woman <laughs> and, and yeah. the implications that that brings. There's not much more, really. Like, right at the end of the episode, um, she, she stays on the planet so that she can have her beauty. That's the reason she stays as opposed to coming with the... I know. Which is What's wild. that about? Yeah. Oh, I was like, why don't they just take her back up to the ship? They can. They've got the technology to to help her out and stuff. <laughs> like she's sure, surely, like if she if that's all she cares about so much, like uh, her her appearance, um, th- go back on the ship yeah. with the technology <laughs> with all the technology and stuff, and we can rebuild you. I mean, they've got robots, I'm sure, and you know, like I'm sure they've got they've got a medical guy. He can sort you out. They're on a spaceship. Like they, they surely would be able to do something, but I, I guess at that point, I don't know. She just, she'd rather live in the the illusion, wouldn't she? That, that's sure, the, and that, that's the grander point, right? It's, it's, do you if you have the option, and I really like this quandary. If you have the option, would you rather live in a fantasy world where you can have anything that you want at any time? You can live in your dream world, mm. or or would you prefer reality? Yeah. And obviously, Captain Pike is choosing reality, and um. Does she even have a name? She does, doesn't she? Is it Lena or something? She just gets called the girl a lot. Mina. I think it's Mina. Um, I'm going to call her Mina. Mina. That might be wrong. <laughs> but Mina obviously chooses um, fiction. She just wants to live in her in her dream world. But that's ultimately summed up as living in the world where she can be beautiful. That's like the main yeah. point. It, that is really weird. Isn't it? Like, yeah, it's, it's just... After watching it the second time through... And then picking up on, on, and maybe it is just the times that we live in, and then maybe it is the, you know, back, back in the 60s, maybe they wouldn't have even, well, they probably didn't even think about these sort of things. It wasn't even like a concept, a thought process. But like now with so many points coming through, like, for example, um, women's rights, etc., cetera, um, feminism, you know, it was just such a bizarre ending. For me, anyway, that's why I found it. I was just like... They just seem to, they just go off. They're just like, well, anyway, let's carry on with our business as usual. And um, away we go. And <laughs> fly away, leave the planet, leave it behind. And th- th- that was it. That was the end of it. And I was yeah, just like. it's really strange. So she chose to pretend to look beautiful yeah. rather than get go along with the, the, the crew. And, and yeah. Yeah, that's the choice that gets made. Very strange. Yeah. Broadside in me, absolutely <laughs> broadside in me. Wasn't ready for that ending. Yeah, neither was I. That that was that was like if if it was more about just that she ultimately would rather have anything she wants in a dream world than live in reality. Fair enough. There's an argument to be made for that, and I do think that's an interesting kind of dilemma. You can have anything, but it's not real. Do you want that? Um, yeah. But yeah, the fact that she's choosing it primarily because she can be beautiful is really strange. But you know, again, that's that's the times, and then that's the the. I mean, the kind of I'm trying to think. Imagine watching that and then going like. There's a few reasons why I think it would attract people into watching. A, there was a lot of um, scenes which you could sort of say like the flirtation um, from her from her character. 
would attract. You know what I mean? Like there's the dancing scene at one point where she gets turned, where it cha- changes again, and yeah. she's like. I don't know if we've even set the premise of what's happening in this episode. Like, let's just let's just <laughs> yeah. I guess I was almost going on the assumption that anyone watching would have seen it, but we can we can set this up. Yeah. So at the beginning, let me let me try and I'll try and run through it, and if I miss anything, let me know. I'm just yeah. jumping. Uh, so at the beginning, we get introduced to our the bridge, and we get introduced to Captain Kerr. Uh, not Captain Kerr. I'll come back to that Captain actually because I was surprised by this. <laughs> but keep going. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So we got introduced to Pike. We got introduced to the Doctor. We got introduced to Spock, uh, the First Officer, and a few other members of the crew, etc. Um, they get the distress beacon. They get the radio beacon. So then they end up going to the planet. I want to call it Tythos. I might be wrong. It's the Talos group. I'm not sure what the Talos. actual planet's called. Talos, that's it. Yeah, yeah, Talos. It's Talos Four. Uh, it's taking on the on the Star Trek page. They go to Talos Four. Yeah, go to Talos Four. Okay, so they go to Talos Four. They um, get the distress beacon. They land on the planet. Uh, they find survivors on the planet. Then it ends up being a ruse from an alien race that lives underground on the planet, which have these huge, big heads, highly intelligent, massive yeah. heads. Highly intelligent creatures, um, and then the majority of the rest of the episode is Captain Pike trying to escape his captives, and uh, the crew on the Enterprise trying to rescue him in various different ways, which ends up all just being illusions. They they just these aliens keep um, putting the image in their mind that nothing, no laser is breaking through the the, the door that they've um, that they've got. Everything, everything is all just in their minds, right? That's that's the premise of it. Uh, getting getting through to the end where the aliens' main purpose for all of this is to try and make a slave race. Was that what was happening near the end? Was that what was happening? This is the second time I watched it through, and I'm still trying to pick up. Yeah, you know what? what? Now, now you what mentioned was going on at the, certain point. What was the aliens' um, motivation? Agenda. I'm not entirely yeah, sure. What was their motivation? It, they are researching. They're observing, um, and I think it may be the case that they're trying to breed a human race that will recultivate the planet surface so that that it's inhabitable again. I think yeah, that's the point. But the pa- but the but the planet is habitable again. That's what they that's what they said. It's only just become habitable. It's, it's again, getting right? there. Yeah. But I think it's I think they're talking there. about the okay. fact that the humans will become like artisans and will. You know, be able to create, you know, farms and and actually make the service because the aliens are still having to survive underground. They've all stayed down there yeah. because they've forgotten how right, to yeah. use their old machines and stuff. Um, sure. So yeah, yeah. I, th- I think the idea is to just make the the surface more usable via a sure. human colony. Yeah, yeah. So eventually, they they you know they they escape. Um, uh, they. The way that they escaped was really silly. Anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, it was all it was it was all a bit silly at some point. Some bits were brilliant, and at other points I was like, "Why? Did, why is this happening now? Like, why? What's going on here?" Um, anyway, after after everything, they manage to escape. They're on the surface. They have a moment of how do you describe it? They yeah, they make a play of of threatening suicide if they're not allowed to leave, and I guess not just suicide, but but for like. They would kill any of the nearby alien race as well, and perhaps damage things. So yeah, they threaten to just kind of suicide bomb if they can't leave. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, they can't go. Yeah, that's that's what they decide to do. Um, then, like we were saying, then the 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 lady who was initially the the first human that these aliens had encountered, which had crashed, they'd repaired her. Loved the little twist bit at the end. Anyway, I, I did like that. That was that was cool. Um, and then it was the, the grand decision of, okay, does she stay on the planet or does she go with the uh, with the crew of the Enterprise? Yeah. She stays on the planet and the Enterprise leave. And they literally, he gets back on the bridge and it's business as usual. <laughs> right, yeah. There's a few random jokes <laughs> thrown in there about the Adam <laughs> and Evie stuff yeah. the, that's been part of the premise of the whole episode as well. Uh, and then they leave and then that's it. They They go. I'm interested. I'm interested to see episode two. 
Is Kirk introduced? Is is he not? Yeah, I said I'd come back to this, so I guess this is a good good a time for it. I didn't realize this wasn't going to be the introduction of Kirk. I just I just thought the first series was was the Kirk series. So yeah, interesting mm. to see that um, that this wasn't the introduction of, of Kirk. What I assumed was going to happen as well is that at the start of the episode, Pike's saying like, "I'm tired of it. I'm, I'm tired yeah. tired of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just want to go back to like normal life. I don't want to be responsible for 200 people anymore. Um, like people have died on my watch recently." Um, and I was like, okay, so there, this is, this is where Pike leaves the ship and Kirk takes captainship of, of the, of the ship. And it's like the trade-off to the yeah. new captain. Um, but we seem to have resolved that by the end of this episode where Pike doesn't want to leave. So I have no idea what's yeah, going to happen. Yeah, he seems quite happy, doesn't now. he? Yeah, he seems quite happy staying in, in the Federation. Yeah. Um, which is kind of his yeah, arc then... of the episode, right? He, he, it takes this alien race actually trying to give him what he thinks he wants for him to realize that actually, no, no, I'm good with, with reality and also with what I'm doing right now in reality. Um, which is a nice little yeah. arc as well. Cause, cause not only is that him realizing what he wants, but it's also demonstrating that like, ultimately even these alien, these really powerful aliens that can show you whatever you want, don't necessarily understand you well enough to keep you like, make you want to stay because they try and show him what they think he wants and they're wrong. He doesn't want it. Like, it takes that for him to realize, yeah. but yeah, ultimately, like that's part of the alien's downfall is they just can't show him something that he'd want to stay for. Yeah, it's really insightful actually, because um, he even says it, doesn't he? He's like, uh, the doctor was right. I just yeah. needed some rest, and <laughs> yeah. like, <laughs> like he he got that, and then <laughs> he's ready ready to get back on, get get back to work, and get back going again. You know what? For the entire episode, it was like for me, it was like a roller coaster. It was like up and down, <laughs> up and down. There's certain moments, certain moments through it, and I was just like, ah, this is great. I'm really enjoying this. I was really, like, hooked. And then other moments, and I'm just like, what on earth is that <laughs> now? Like, why why, why are they showing him this? Or, like, why did they keep walking out the door every time they, do, they use a psychic ability on him? And they're done <laughs> yeah. with that. Then they walk out the door, then they're, then they're out of there. Uh, <laughs> it just cracked me up. These guys, have su- these guys have such knowledge and power, but they don't seem to... I don't know. They don't seem to know how to use their own abilities. I don't know. I don't know. In, no, yeah, no, I know what you mean. In some way, they do make some no. strange decisions. And I think partially that may just be the fact that you you can't write a species that's three times as intelligent as you are, just practically speaking, um, like as a human writer. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, there are also parts where I think they genuinely do... And it's intentionally written that they misunderstand what what they should be doing in order to to get their way. Like they do misunderstand Pike. Yeah. Um, they predict some of his early behaviors, but he is actually more intelligent um, and more sure of what he wants than they are in the end. I guess because they think he do, mm. does want to just mm. live in this you know, nice, nice picnic world with a horse. And he's like, nah, sod that. Yeah, this utopia. I'm back to my ship. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I, as well as that arc being really interesting as well, I did. I really liked Pike as a character in this whole, in this whole episode. Um, yeah, yeah, he's um, well, he's like that sort of macho, strong male character, um, which you know, like it, like you're saying, he he does have an arc through the sh- through the show. He does have an through through the episode. Sorry, he does have an arc through it. I liked him, but then I didn't like him at some point. Some points I was just like getting frustrated, like watching him. I was just like, I don't know. I don't know what it was about. Maybe it was the <laughs> acting. I don't know. Maybe it was the maybe it was the way that it was acted. Um, maybe maybe it was that. <laughs> There's a few moments of like just a, a random look that he would give, <laughs> more like a, a turn of his head. And and again, I think that's just the style of the time, isn't it? You know, it's it's just one of those. Um, you know, like I, I'm gonna just jump uh, jump over to. The transportery stuff. Sure. Just for a second. And even though the quality... And this is why I was saying sometimes I had ups and downs through the show. Like, although, yeah, some of the characters were a bit hard to watch for myself, like, uh, from a, the- a theatrical point of view, from a okay, performance sure. point of view. Uh, some of the... Some of the... Like, like some of the props, like his communicator, <laughs> loved that. It looked really retro and stuff, but... 
uh, for a mod, uh, for our times anyway for 2021 look retro but i really liked his communicator <laughs> I, I thought it was great and then the the transporter that he used to get down to the planet i really i don't know why when i was watching that the second time around i loved the way that the effects showed that i don't know yeah. why like the little white um, light in, in their chest and stuff, sure, and then yeah. it kind of like fizzled around them. I don't know why I like that so much. <laughs> I don't know why I jumped on that straight away. I was just like, this is cool. I also I like, like the it. really obvious freeze why. frames that happen when someone's beaming in. <laughs> like someone will stop and yes. look at the transporter, but they're completely frozen in time as the person transports in. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> taken, taken in that one second of like, <laughs> no, I'm stuck, no, ah, I can't. <laughs> Disappeared. Or, or the other option, instead of freeze framing the screen, is to split screen, um, where one person on the left hand side of the screen can continue to move while someone on the right half of the screen beams in or out. And the color timing on the two halves of the screen is like completely off. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, isn't it? So good. Like, it's so bad, it's so good. I don't know. Is it good? Oh, no, it I love that. That's just you know what, cheesy old. You know what the, the, hardest, the hardest thing about recording a show like like this one, like like we're trying to do here, like recording cadets, is there are so many Star Trek fans out there <laughs> which have such knowledge and they have such a, a plethora of, of information that they are so, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's, there's been Trekkies for Trek years and years and years. And like, years. Yeah. <laughs> We are going to get so much abuse for the <laughs> lack of our own knowledge. You know what I mean? Like, we're going to get so much abuse. Oh, I'm looking forward to reading those comments. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, everyone bear in mind. First episode I've seen. <laughs> We're so we're so new to this. We're like we're like um, we've opened up a door that we we probably can't close again because now we've opened up this door of the Star Trek universe from the beginning. It's. Um, I don't know. It's going to be, it's going to learn, be a wild like, ride. I want to learn. I want to, I want to be one of those people who knows everything. You want to be a Trekkie, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of transporters as well, one of the things I really liked, um, which also sort of goes back to just there are systems in place in this world that we don't know about. They're just there and they're established. I really like that the transporter just has this like dedicated transporter team. There are just two guys who, as far as I can tell, their job is to just work the transporter it's not just yeah, something that someone hits yeah. a button on on the in the deck and, and does it. There's these two guys and they have special jumpsuits that no I've not seen anyone else wearing and they're just the guys who work the transporter panels. I, I just really like that that's its mm. own job on this ship is just the transporter people. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm fairly sure like things like their uniforms and stuff. Do, uh, it does definitely evolve as the show goes on, so yeah. it, it becomes a lot more uh, fixed in place. I don't know. If you know about like the, the whole idea of like the red shirts as well, like have you ever heard that term, um, like the red shirts? You know? So only via osmosis, I'm aware of the joke that is it the red shirt always dies first when they beam down to a planet. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, uh, but nobody died in this. Um, nobody died in this episode. Is that true? No one died in this one. I don't yeah, think so. I, can't I don't think, think anybody died. died. Yeah, no one. Nobody died. Nobody got. Nobody got really seriously hurt. You know what? I've just thought of I've just thought of a really odd thing, right? The Federation knows about this planet where these aliens have captured other aliens and have them in like a zoo, right? Do they? Well they do now, I guess. You know like they well now they're aware of it, but they just leave them. <laughs> <laughs> it's only totally just popped in my head that they just leave the the rest of the aliens to their fate. Like they don't they don't save the other aliens. Yeah. I guess they just leave them in their I, I guess they just leave them in their illusionary states. Are all the other aliens? I don't know. There was a bird thing at one point. Did you notice yeah, that? Yeah, and like an ape. Like, 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 <laughs> pig man. Uh, yeah, like an ape with a pig face. Yeah. <laughs> For the Enterprise specifically, obviously they, they have their own problems because they were going to bypass the planet that probably has survivors on it just to look after their own people. Uh, oh, they did say, didn't they? Yeah, they they've got to get to the they've got to get to the planet they need to because they need. They've just been in a battle. Medical. Yeah, they've got injured people yeah. on the ship. Um, probably low on resources because they've just been on an excursion. So I don't know mm. how, like, I don't know the state of the Star Trek universe, of course. I don't know if, if the Federation has the resources to just send a ship back out to this planet to to deal with it. I mean, maybe they do, and maybe that is happening behind the scenes after they get home. They'll be like, oh, yeah, go and, uh, go and mop those aliens up there trying to capture humans. Maybe. I'd, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's in, like, books and stuff as well, you know, because there must be so much lore out there that 
that right now me and you are so unaware of. <laughs> like, well, obviously there's going to be a Star uh, Star Trek like um, like wiki pages and you know so much content in there. Um, I'm really, I am, like I say about opening up a door. I'm really worried that like I'm going to get so absorbed in this <laughs> world that it's just all I'm going to be thinking about all the time. Star Trek. <laughs> I'm just going to be thinking about Star Trek. <laughs> So I've got a couple of the things here that I wrote down that I'd be interested in talking about. Yeah, one one of the things that I really liked about um, Pike throughout the episode was his his method of problem solving. I found really interesting, and and he just didn't stoop to a couple of things that I I expected him to stoop to. Mm. To go back to something we talked about earlier, where the ultimate like decision in the episode is does one stay in a fantasy world where they can have anything or does one live in reality? Which is a bit of a yeah. dilemma. Like there's you could definitely have an interesting discussion around that and be torn between those two options. And no one in the episode really is. Um which isn't a bad thing. I actually kind of like that everyone just has their conviction off the bat about which of those things they'd rather do. That like mm. she's called Vina, I remember now. Um Vina is just gonna stay. Like she doesn't have to think twice about it. Pike is just gonna leave. There's no two ways about that either. And even Pike is happy with Vina to stay. <laughs> That's not even discussed, really. That's everyone just kind of knows knows what their answer to this quandary is because they just know what they want. Yeah. Um, which is kind of interesting that like the, the, there is this this dilemma, but he is a decisive captain. He's a leader, and he just makes that decision. That's kind of part of his character, which he's had to do a few other times in the episode. Clearly, he's had to make other difficult decisions as captain. They're about to bypass this planet that might have survivors on it. He's been in this battle where people have died under his command. Like he's a hardened veteran captain who makes difficult decisions, and I find that really interesting. And people clearly have a lot of respect yeah. for him for doing that as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's true. Um, yeah, a lot of the decision making on his part was, like you say, mainly just to make sure his crew survive and get get to the planet that they need to get to, isn't right. it? Uh, in interesting, interesting sort of character. Mm. Interesting, but. As you say, the audience are just supposed to accept it. You know, the the they're meant to accept everything that's happening at this point, sure. without any prior history, without any prior knowledge of anything else that's going on in the universe. And I'm sure, obviously, that more will get explained as we're going forward. Because yeah. um, I don't even did they even do like the sort of classic sort of Star Trek introduction? I don't even think they did. What is a classic Star Trek introduction? They, they you know, they say uh, space. The fact, oh the right, okay. The, like the the captain's no. log start bit. Or These whatever. are the, the voyages of the yeah, Starship okay. Enterprise. <laughs> sure. yeah. yeah, no one said that. No one said that in this episode. We just had some, you know, it just banging music, and and, and, <laughs> and that's why I kind of like that about it. You know, that just jumping yeah. in. That's why I like Pike's problem solving stuff. You know, you just kind of you, you accept everything everything that's happening. Mm, you just yeah. accept it. Like when the aliens came in, when when they came in, you just accepted that they were the aliens, and then you know. I don't know. It just it just rolled on from there, really. There's a whole program. Um, like I say, it just got absorbed with the with the illusions, didn't it? At one point, you know, and then just trying to break out of that. And that that was another thing I liked about Pike as well. Not only did he not stoop to um, ever ever really considering staying in the illusion, as soon as he knew what the deal was and that he could have whatever he wanted or stay in reality, he's just like, well, I choose reality. Easy. Um, he also never stoops to what the aliens want while he's trying to break out of the cage. Like, he, he just blanks, just straight up ignores most characters most of the time while he's in there just to figure out the problem, which is really interesting. Like, he'll, he'll come out of one of his like little dream sequences and he says... Longer hair, different dress, but it is you. Or rather, the image of Venus. But why you again? Why didn't they create a different girl? It's like, that's his first thought. It's not yeah. like... Um, and anything to do with his own survival or like worrying about what just happened. It's just straight to the point. I, I have a problem to solve and I need to go about solving it. Um, and he won't even talk yeah. back to like the aliens while they're trying to converse with him sometimes. He'll just, he'll just be thinking out loud his thought process of trying to solve the problem. And I really liked that as well. That it's just a puzzle that he needs to, to solve to get out. Interesting show. You know what I mean? Like it, you clearly, like from, from listening from what you said as well, you clearly want to I know you want to explore it more, but at the end of the episode, did it leave you wanting more? Did it leave you, 
you know, before it played it on to the next bit, where you're just like, what's ha- what's going to happen now? What's going to happen next? Like, you know. Yes, I, I cannot wait to watch the next episodes. Yeah, no, I'm I'm really looking forward to carrying on with this. This first episode is, even though it's maybe not quite what I expected, it is exactly what I wanted from a first episode. I did just get thrown into a, yeah. a universe that feels like it's already established and has these processes in place. I watched characters solving an interesting problem at like a a steady pace where intru- like ideas were introduced, like interesting, clever ideas. The episode almost touched on some philosophy as well, and I could have seen it going even further in that direction. Like I would have enjoyed a discussion on like solipsism. Like at one point, the characters realize they can make us see anything. How do you deal with a with not knowing if a single thing you're looking at is reality or not? Yeah. Which becomes yeah. both the puzzle they need to solve and the like emotional crux of the dilemma at the end, which is cool. Um, mm. But yeah, that touches on like a really big philosophical problem of like, how do you know that anything that you see is reality? How do you know you're not just a brain in a vat or that you're in the matrix? And or um, how is it described by Descartes? Is it that you're like a dreaming? How do you know you're not a butterfly having a dream or something? Like you can't really know that. And if they'd discussed that kind of really philosophical angle, I would have also enjoyed that. And they didn't ever quite get that far. Um, mm, but yeah, what they did yeah. talk about was really fun and interesting to watch, yeah. So I cannot wait oh, to Oh, yeah, it. yeah, 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 100%. Um, like I say, as as, a, as an audience viewer watching it, I enjoyed it. I had a few moments of just being like, oh, cringy, <laughs> cringy stuff. Yeah. Um, if it wasn't the verbal dialogue, if it was the, the acting, if it was the... If it was if it was the set or the scenery or whatever it was, mm-hmm. but I feel like I got to the end and I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm ready to watch like the next episode, especially because obviously you can sort of see on the next episode, some of the classical characters. You can see um, Kirk in, in the, is he in the thumbnail uh, on Netflix at the moment. Cause that's where we're, that's where we're viewing it at the moment. Ooh, okay. If you, you you know, I get, well, that's where I'm viewing it at the moment. Yeah. I don't know. You got it on, got it on the old div. div- I'm watching it on Netflix. It on I had another look at the next thumbnail. So, you've seen Kirk's in episode two. Yeah, on the on just on the picture on the on the thing. So I was, that's why I was just like, oh, I wonder, like, how how are they going to introduce this guy into it? How yeah, are they I'm really surprised Kirk by that because because it felt like we just got to the point where Pike's almost back in the driver's seat. Like we were seeing him about to leave, and then he has this revelation that like, no, this is where he belongs. Is he about to get kicked out yeah. by Kirk anyway? That would actually be really interesting for him to be like, okay, I'm ready to go. And then he just like dies or, or gets thrown out by the Federation. He's like, oh no, this, this ship's Kirk's now. That'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a bit of a U-turn. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to finding out what happens next. Like, I have no idea where the show, I have no idea where the show is going to go. And especially because of like um, the movies that have come out in later years. And there's a lot of time. But the thing with Star Trek... As far as I can tell, recently there's a lot of timelines that have been established. There's lots of like different things that are going on in different sort of, you know. I, in fact, I I don't even know now. Us watching this show, canon wise with the story, if this is even still, I know it is canon. I know it is canon for the for the show, but um, I think I think they've like spun off now, like as well. I think they've like gone off into different things. I think they've gone back in time a few times oh, sure, and stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> uh, so, like, I mean, like, yeah, spoilers for yourself, but it is sixty years old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's I, I I don't know where they're gonna go with the rest of the show, and then it's gonna be really interesting to see how they how they sort of have developed everybody else and how they've kind of kept on with the storylines of each characters. Uh, it's weird. I keep thinking of Pike, but I know Pike from like a different movie. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. I know I'm not aware of else. that. I don't think, unless he was in 07, and I just don't remember. Because to be honest, I don't remember anything about that film. It was a long time ago. Oh, there's just so there's so much content. There's so much content yeah. that we're gonna that we're gonna have to work through. We certainly are. Um, <laughs> but again, it's it's fun. I am. You know what? I did enjoy it. I'm not gonna lie. I did. Enjoy, I enjoyed it. It was it was a bit wacky and a bit weird. Hopefully, I keep up the enjoyment. Hopefully, I keep up, you know, the energy that I had when I was watching it. I don't want to watch an episode and go like, oh, for, you know, for fuck's sake, I don't want to watch that now. Like, it's too, or maybe it's too hard to watch. I don't know. Like, um, but I think we'll definitely have to, we'll have to wait and see what happens yeah, we'll, next. Yeah, we'll wait and see. 
I've got, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to touch on, but I had, I think, one more thing to to talk about uh, that I also wanted to ask you about as well, based on your previous Star Trek experience. Go for it. Um, This is only my impression from the very, very little I know about Trek, which is almost nothing. Um, So I could just be wrong. But I always think of Trek as being very much an ensemble cast uh, on a TV show. Like, even though Picard is the captain in TNG, I don't think that TNG is the Picard show. I don't think of him as a main character. Whereas this episode really felt very much like the Pike show. Everyone was sort of a supporting character to Pike, which was also not what I was expecting. And I don't know I don't know whether that feels the same to you. Is it, are they later Star Trek's more kind of ensemble? I think in every every single show, um, the captain of the ship has always been the premise. Has always is always gonna be like the main the main person, um, with this with the the ensemble being, yeah, second secondary characters, but um, you know support supporting cast, but also with their own storylines, um, interlinked with the show as yeah. well, interlinked with the stories uh, that are happening at the time. But as far as I'm as far as I've been aware, with all Star Trek shows, usually it is the the captain, which is the um, which is the main character. Uh, Fair enough. Okay, that's with my experience. But then again. You've got there's there are obviously probably a, there's a probably a lot more in depth stuff going on. Sure. Um, and every uh, you know and everybody that's on screen, Spock for example, he's definitely a main character. Sure. I wouldn't say he felt it in this episode though. Although clearly he is at some point because everyone knows him. Yeah, I feel like in this in this first episode he was definitely established as. He didn't seem very close to Pike, no. did he? He didn't seem like he was the best of mates with Pike or anything like that. No. If anything, it felt like number number one or his number one. Yes, definitely. You know, was was the main was his main sort of um, yeah, I'd agree with and that. a doctor as well. Yeah. Obviously, they were like the main main characters for that. And that that is where some of the I, I mentioned that the show almost felt half aware of the sexism, and that that was interesting mm. with the number one being a woman and him saying now she does a good job, all right. It's just that I can't get used to having a woman on the bridge. No offense, Lieutenant. You're different, of course. And the show is clearly aware that that's like not a good thing for him to say. Um, so that relationship with the first lieutenant was really interesting. So it was it was cool. Yeah, to see he said aware. something like "You're um, you're different," or something like that, yeah. didn't he? That, yeah, yeah. I think that is what he said. Like "You're different," of course. And she gives it. So a- is that like a relation? Is that re- is that relationship of? Um, a personal one to them, like you know, if they got something going on between them or something. I, are we going to see any more of that? Maybe not. Is it? I read it. Oh, everything that we're watching, every, everything that we're watching right now yeah. might just get like completely scrapped. Oh, but, yeah, in I'm episode sure, two. one episode in. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like it might, it might just be like, ah, now we'll screw that. We'll keep him. We'll keep that character. We'll keep keep that character. Keep this as history. But you know, we're just going to grab all the other characters that you saw. Get rid of them. Throw in a new cast, and we're just gonna have a brand new cast because that's how I feel like it's gonna go. Because I can't, but I don't know. How, I don't know if they're gonna write that into the story. Or they're just gonna do the same sort of thing and say like, "Oh, just the audience will just accept the choices made, sure. you know, by the by the writing team and stuff like that." But who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen? Who knows? What's, <laughs> other than all the people that have watched it, except for yeah, us most, most people know what's gonna happen. <laughs> But we don't. Most, I think, I think ninety nine percent of the of anybody listening who is a Star Trek fan will know exactly what's going on if they're if they're dedicated <laughs> and have watched it all. But um, yeah, I I'm intrigued to see what's going to happen next. Me too. I'm intrigued to see where they're going to go with things and character choices. And again, maybe it might struggle with the writing of the times, and we might get a few more of those strange sexist comments being thrown out, which might be a bit jarring for us. Yeah. When you said it was a roller coaster for you, they were probably, I think they may have been the only moments in the show, but they were the moments in the show where I cringed um, and was like, oh, that's yeah. that's hard to listen to now. Um, so, yeah, yeah, we'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, and then I was, I was uh, yeah, I was going to say, are you going to start any of the other shows as well? Are you just going to like jump in with those other shows and just no, no, roll with all, it? No, no, it's all going to be in order. You're just going to stick? Yeah. Gonna be an order. Watch the whole wow, original okay. series. Of, 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 yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, for the long 12, 12 years later, we're still going to be recording this, and we're probably not even going to be anywhere close to finishing, like getting, getting through all of these productions, all of all of the movies and the shows and the time jumps and the time. Loops yeah, you bet. And, we're doing the movies uh, too. We're doing everything. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant! I love it. I love it. All right. Well, yeah, that I think basically does us for the first episode. So that was the the pilot for the original Star Trek series episode one the cage, um, I yeah I really loved it and I can't wait to watch the next one. Yeah, I can't wait to see what happens. I can't wait to see how they they uh, they go forward with this show. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. All right, thank you for watching, folks, and we will catch you next time. Bye, everyone.